Mark Training. My name's Simon. In this session, we're going to be looking at live events. Uh, live events are great. Uh, I use them all the time, actually, for when I'm doing uh, training sessions across the internet. Um, there's three different sort of live events that we can do. But let's have a, a quick dive into Teams and, and let's have a look. So, if we have a look in our calendar for the site, for come on, click, thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, in your calendar, obviously you've got the meet now and then you've got the new meeting, but if you drop that list down, there is actually a live event. So I'm just going to run you through the live event. So the live event, uh, the title for this is going to be um, Teams Live Event Training. And that's great. Uh, location, there isn't a location because I don't actually have a location. And instead of 2 o'clock, I'm just going to knock that down at 2.30 because it doesn't really make any difference for me at the moment. But by 2 o'clock, I will have actually run out of time to actually j join the meeting. You can provide some information. Uh, so when I'm doing um, like part one or part two of Teams Online, uh, I, you know, I, I, I would put in there, this is part one of the Teams training uh we will cover some stuff so we will cover stuff there we go we can invite presenters uh or, or producers so let's just uh, add in a quick presenter of joe uh and then that's joe being a presenter uh, we can actually make joe a producer very very easily just by knocking down that arrow and, and figuring out which one we want to do so the two different well sorry the difference between the two uh, roles there as a producer you actually get to produce the event so you actually get to say when somebody goes live um, you are in control okay you're 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 you can you can still present don't get me wrong uh, and you'll see me do exactly that but as a producer you you're kind of second in command so to speak if anything goes wrong with my internet and I'm on a live call I always make sure that there's somebody else that's a producer so that they can step in and take over for me I live in the countryside where uh, my internet speed is not the greatest and it's not the most stable connection in the world so sometimes my internet drops out when I'm delivering a live session so I've always got somebody else that's a producer that can obviously set the next person to go live or the next thing to go live or fill in for me what a presenter can do is a presenter presents. So uh, the producer would send the presenter to the live part of the equation and they would present whatever it was that we'd ask them to present. Um, they can't control that situation, say um, the one where my internet goes. If, you're, if you've just got a presenter, there's nobody that can take over for you. So top tip, always have at least two producers because that will actually then give us uh, some sort of redundancy, shall we say, uh, in, in case that something goes wrong with, with the main producer. So I'm just going to leave that. I'm going to take Joe out, actually, because I'll just send him a spurious email telling him that he's actually invited to a team's training in half an hour, and then he'll pack. Uh, and then I'm going to push next. OK, so we have three different types of people here, or three different types of, of live event. We have uh, only people that you want to actually invite. So if I just wanted to invite Joe, and I wanted to invite Phil, and I wanted to invite um, Andy, and I wanted to invite somebody else and somebody else, you would actually have to put in these people one by one. Okay, or you, you can do groups of people. So uh, we've got an engineer group, which it's not finding because that, that obviously far too engaging <laughs> okay let's have a look see if we can oh good yeah the competitions team we, we can invite the competitions team um but this is a very laborious process adding uh, people and or groups one by one uh, so i don't like doing that uh, we can go organization uh, wide uh, this is quite a good one so nobody outside of your organization can join um, it requires a sign in from your organization so let's just say for the sake of example I, I set that straight away there uh, if you don't have an arc login you don't get to log in and actually watch the live event and then we've got this third option um, this is a, a really good option depending on what you're looking for uh, this is the public event uh, it is open to absolutely everybody um, 
And you can use this when most of the attendees are outside of your organisation. There is absolutely no sign-in required. People can just arrive and, and go for it. Um, all they can do is view. Um, there's very little interaction from that point of view. Uh, they can see what's going on on your laptop. They can obviously hear your voice, uh, you know, and, and the presenters, etc., etc. But they have very limited ability to interact. In fact, it basically comes down to a Q and A session. Um, but that is only if we turn it on. Okay. <laughs> which is really good so if you don't actually turn on the Q&A um, it doesn't matter nobody can ask a question anyway um, but from an external point of view um, uh, there, there, there's very limited interaction um, the Q&A doesn't go straight away live it comes through to be moderated first which is why you should always have a presenter and or uh, or well, certainly produce a spare uh, and or other presenters because then they can actually man the Q&A as, as the session progresses and we can see where we go uh, because questions are only published once they've been moderated so at the moment I'm just going to use a public event and the reason for that's quite simple um, my alter ego that I will be using on another laptop isn't actually within the ARC environment so I need to actually run uh, an outside event I think live events are absolutely great and if you're doing like an assembly uh, so everybody can join in because not everybody can fit into the room and stuff then this is a brilliant way of doing it if you're doing it across multiple academies multiple schools or, or trusts or whatever um, then again that's great we can actually get everybody involved uh, and, and it's a really nice thing to do up to you whether you're going to use the organization wide or the public I should tell you that only people that get the link are actually going to be coming in anyway. Okay, so it's only people you send the link to, uh, and obviously people they send the link to, uh, are actually going to get that link to enable them to come into the meeting. You need a link from Teams to get into the meeting. So I'm going to leave that as, as public, uh, as I said, because I need to. And then we've got how will you produce your live event? So um, you plan to use Teams to share content from presenters, webcams and screens. Yes, we absolutely do. So we can actually, as uh, producers and presenters, we can download that recording later because all of uh, all live events are recorded uh, and they're put up for about 21 days, I think it is, before they get recorded. Uh, blah, 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 before they get recorded, before they get deleted over. So sorry. The recording we can make available to attendees. They can't download it. Uh, but they can actually watch it later so your, our attendees our participants if you like can actually sit and watch this video later on uh, as often as they like up, up to about 21 days we can actually uh, have captions on um, that doesn't actually go out and broadcast as captions it is merely um, the the end user if you like can put the captions on and we can translate it as well in, in up to six languages and then we would actually have to tick these six languages. I've never actually uh, used that and I, I, I don't know if it works properly. There is an attendee engagement report which we can obviously see. Uh, it's not for general consumption, it is just for us as the producers. And then obviously we've got the Q&A and as I said the Q&A uh, is, is moderated. Comments only go live if we want them to go live. And then if we've got a participant that comes back and, and reviews the recording that the Q&A is there so we can actually see the Q&A popping up and, and, and questions being uh, posted and, and answered okay so all of that being said I'm now going to push schedule there and what that does is it's going to schedule the meeting you can see it's in, on the calendar behind me teams live event training there it is so what we want to do is we want to get the attendee link which I've now copied to my clipboard uh, and I'm going to push close, but I'm going to push close in a moment uh, because there are some bits and pieces down here. So if we're uh, <laughs> when it's time for the live event, do not forward this to the attendees. There's there's a, a, a dial-in pin code uh, if if we're looking at um, presenters and things that are outside of the organisation. Uh, live event resources. These are all available after our live event. So I'm just going to put, oh, obviously we can, if we want to, we can cancel this meeting. Uh, and if you need to, obviously we're just going to push close there for a second. Uh, but if I wanted to, I can go back into there and that cancel meeting is, is there if I need it. 
okay i'm just going to show you because it was on about um in here it said about live event resources so this is a live event uh training session that i had earlier on and here are my resources that i can download um like i said our, our participants can't uh, they have access to watch the video recording but obviously we get to download it we get to download the q a report again our participants get to see it we get to uh, download the attendee engagement report and we can actually disable the recording for all attendees so they don't actually get to see it so if you've made a horrendous blooper let's just hit the disable button afterwards it's fine and there's some advanced options which basically we can back up the recording which means download it and uh, there's a transcript option there so we can actually download a transcript of, of the recording as well uh, but I'm not actually going to do any of that so I've got my uh, attendee link so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my Outlook and I'm actually going to send myself an email so here we go, new email, and I'm going to send it to simon.west.archive.gmail.com. Uh, there we go. So th th this is a, a throwaway email address that I uh, use. Um, anything that's actually already in the inbox, whenever I log into it, I just delete everything. Uh, I never read it. I use it just for this sort of uh, training purposes here. So I'm just going to put uh, Teams training uh as the subject matter now if i wanted to i could of course just put in uh teams training and today is the 27th of the 7th 2020 uh at and we said it's going to be at 14 30. now if i highlight all of that i can actually put in a nice link so let's put in a link i'm going to make sure it's on an existing file or web page so that's the text i'm going to display and that's actually the link that it's going to go to. So I'm just going to delete the link out of there now. And here we go. So that is my link. So all I, all I need to do when I get this email is click on that link. Okay, and now I'm going to send it off to that Gmail account. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to disappear off around the corner uh, where my other laptop is. And we're going to have a look and see how we're going to do. So we can see that that's the only email in there. I've cleared out all the other junk and the spam and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, I'm going to open up that email and there is my Teams training for the 27th of the 7th, uh, 2020 at 14.30. So if I click on that, it gives me the choice. I can open it in Microsoft Teams. I can cancel that and watch it on the web instead. I do actually have Teams installed on this laptop. Um, and you do get a slightly better experience using the actual Teams app. So I'm actually going to open it up in the app just make that full screen and I'm going to join anonymously because the only person that can actually join this event now is me so uh, this is the screen that we get as a participant and we've got the Q&A is open by default we've got a couple of other little icons up here we've got show settings so you can change your theme from dark to high contrast to, to default you can open the language settings it sets you in English UK but you can obviously set it to whatever you like but then you also have to restart and come back in and all of that sort of stuff. So there's not really much you can play with in there. And the general info button is, yes, it's a Teams live training event and it's due to start at 14.30. Well done. Uh, and that's kind of it. That's, that's the only sort of information that we've got. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to ask myself a couple of questions. Uh, I know the live event hasn't started yet, but the Q&A is, is actually open. So what I can do is uh, I'm going to put in my name. Uh, Simon and I'm going to ask a question and I'm going to ask something that's stupid that I'm never going to reply to in the real world um, and the reason I'm going to do that is I, I, then I can show you on the moderation sort of side of things uh, how we deal with that so what I'm going to do is uh, do you live in a mushroom here we go do you live in a mushroom which is a bit of a weird one I'll, I'll grant you and I can't even spell mushroom today so there we go, do you live in a mushroom? So that's my first one. And then my second one is, uh, is Teams good for collaboration? Collaboration. Is Teams good for collaboration? There we go, and I'm gonna post that. So you can see that I've got two messages and they both say private because at the moment, uh, a moderator hasn't seen these messages. They've not responded to them. They've not done anything. Uh, featured messages are messages that we've actually, as a moderator, 
we've responded to, we've published as a, as a thing, and that's fine. Okay, so the live event hasn't started yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my other laptop, and I'm going to show you what we're going to do next. So what I would normally do is, other than getting um, you know a meeting ready, uh, I normally open up um, a presentation one. Where is it? There it is. Couldn't see it for looking. And this has actually got a nice uh, Teams background with with Arcs Company logo in the background. And what I do is I, I just make that you know push F5 to start start the push F5 to start the slide show. Uh, and, and on my second screen, I have two screens on this laptop. On my second screen, that's that's fine. That's absolutely uh, lovely. And then I'm just going to minimise that and minimise that. So let's have a look at our Teams meeting. Let's uh, let's click in it. And what we're actually going to do is I'm going to join that meeting. Uh, I know it's only quarter past two, but I can join the meeting whenever I particularly want to. Hi, that's me. Uh, so I'm going to join now, and by default. Uh, our microphone is turned off uh, and that's because that's the default if we're in a big environment with lots and lots of, of, of things going on I've just got a reminder that my meeting starts in 15 minutes look there we go um, if there's a lot going on joining with your microphone mute is a good idea but obviously at the moment there's only me uh, talking to me so I'm, I, I may as well actually have my microphone on so and now I'm going to join we connect online to our meeting, to our live event, sorry, it's not a meeting. And we can see that I've already got one attendee. So it says up in the top left hand corner, Teams live event training. Uh, obviously I started the event 12 seconds, 13 seconds, 14 seconds ago. We have one attendee and we are pre-live. Pre-live means that we haven't gone live yet. Okay, we don't know who that attendee is and you know we're, we're, the only time we'll actually know is afterwards if we download that engagement report and if they've actually given us a, a, a name. On the right hand side here we have leave, that's actually going to make us leave the event. So uh, that's the last button that you want to push, literally the last button that you should push. Uh, okay, we've got some heartbeat information, some health and performance. So I've got an estimated bandwidth of 3.4 megabytes per <laughs> megabits per second, sorry. And you can see, when I said earlier on that my internet was a little bit shoddy, uh, I really wasn't kidding, my internet is not great out here. Um, so that's just some information for us. So we've got video processing is hardware enabled, camera resolution 720p, um, media sharing is enabled, and bitrate is 50. <laughs> bitrate is higher than I've actually got download. But anyway, uh, here's our Q&A. So we can say, see that the Q&A is open. Um, we haven't published anything, we've not dismissed anything, but we do have two new comments. I wonder what they are. Look, do you live in a mushroom? Okay, so, this is a pointless question uh, and one that I'm not going to answer. So what I can do is I can push dismiss. It will erase it from here and puts it in our dismissed uh, little sort of tab over here. If I've made a mistake for some reason, I can obviously push restore. So I just go back into dismissed, push restore, and it will actually bung it straight back into our new tab. If I stupidly publish this question, it will go into the published part and now everybody in the entire meeting can see that okay so what we can actually do at that point is we can delete it so we can delete that question uh, and, and and it's gone okay once we've actually deleted the question the question has been deleted now the other question that we've got here is teams good for collaboration i'm going to actually answer this twice okay so is teams good for collaboration uh, yes it is it is magic okay so I'm gonna hit enter there and I've replied I have replied privately to that so is teams for good is teams good for collaboration and privately I've replied yes it is it's magic if I publish that you would think that that's gonna go with it but no if I publish it is teams good for collaboration there is no answer so this time I'm going to answer again, but I'm going to answer uh, with a different answer. Obviously, um, it's more for collaboration than a fox is. Lol. Okay, so it's more for collaboration than a fox is. I don't know why it's more than the fox. That pops into your head and sometimes you just can't get rid of it. So what we're going to do, uh, before I do anything else, I'm going to... 
uh, we're, we're just going to slide around the corner and we're going to have a look and make sure that that's actually come up properly. Okay, and we can see quite categorically uh, my questions. Do you live in a mushroom? There's nothing going on there. Uh, I've got, is Teams good for collaboration? Yes, it is. It is magic. And then obviously uh, we've got featured because I actually answered that question. And you can see I've got a different answer here. So it's more for collaboration than a fox is. Uh, so my, if I'm replying privately, that's one thing. If I'm published the, 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 the question and then reply, that goes to everybody. Okay, so there's a little bit of a differential there that's worth noting. I'm just going to go back to my other laptop now. Okay, so that's the Q&A. Uh, there is some meeting notes, so these are for us only, for, for producers and presenters. We can actually make some meeting notes as we, as we go along. There's a, a, a chat, so we can actually have a chat between the producers and, again, the presenters. That doesn't go into uh, the Q&A uh, and, and stuff on, on the public kind of side of, of, of life. We can invite people. We can show participants. Uh, so we can invite somebody there uh, by putting in... Their, their team's ID uh, and, and we can obviously enter a, a phone number if, if that's how they're registered um, and we can actually see who's in the meeting so currently we have me um, and there's a gear there and, and that just shows various settings so the audio devices that I'm using uh, what speaker what microphone webcam etc etc so and then lastly there's a little info button uh, which will just give you some information about the call that we're actually on so i'm just going to actually close that because what i would normally do is if i'm actually presenting this if i'm actually in charge and i'm doing the whole produ producer sort of thing um, i wouldn't man the q a myself i would try and get somebody else to do that for me because keeping up with all of this and figuring out where we're going with it all that's my job okay so we can see uh, that so far I haven't started an event and that's great. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to share something. I share, uh, oh, sorry, I'm, <laughs> I started this slideshow earlier on. And by the way, when you click on uh, share and then you go to that, I don't know why it's infuriating, but Microsoft have decided that what you really, really, really want to do is minimize your screen when you do that. I, I genuinely don't know why that is. Um, so I'm just going to click on here and you can see here this is the queue up here so the left hand pane up here is the queue and the right hand pane is what we're actually going to be sending out to people so I'm just going to send that live it's not going live yet because we haven't started but that's going to send it into the live pane from the queue pane to the live pane okay so let's just hit that going over there and you can see that's landed in there nicely. If I had something else to queue up afterwards, I can put that into the, uh, the queue. So uh, just to demonstrate that, I'm just going to click on me there. And you can see that I am now uh, in the queue to go live. So what I'm going to do now is uh, what, what I would normally do is a couple of minutes before I was going to go live, I would actually ask uh, my fellow producers and presenters to, to mute their microphones. And then I would actually start the actual live event. So the live event isn't live yet. You'll know it's live because this becomes a red box rather than a yellow box. So let's just see what that looks like. There's a start button there. And strangely enough, that's how you start a live meeting. Are you sure you want to start the live event now? Well, yes, I am. Um, you can't stop and restart a live meeting. Uh, and, and the event can last up to 16 hours from the start time. Um, but you must be aware that it says there 10 to 20 second delay. Um, I generally find it somewhere between 20 and 30 second delay. So by the time you've said something here, it will take about 20 to 30 seconds for your audience to actually hear and see that. So I'm just gonna push continue. It said starting the live event. There we go, and we are now live. And you can see the start button is turned to an end button and we've got a red border around our live window there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stop sharing um, this screen and I'm actually going to put myself live first. So the first thing I'm going to do, because I want to continue with our live event, I'm going to send myself live. 
And while I'm talking to people, I can say, hi, how are you doing? Welcome to ARC Training. Uh, my name's Simon. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And actually, in the background, what I'm doing is sorting out my stopping my sharing thing. I'm closing down my, uh, my, my PowerPoint presentation behind the scenes. So, so nobody sees this because I'm talking to them and saying, you know, it's great for you to join me. Um, and what I would, what I generally do is when I'm doing like the Teams training as a live event, I say things like, you know, it would be lovely if you wouldn't mind in the Q&A in the uh, right hand panel over there, would you mind just dropping in your name and where you're from? Because although you get to see me and you get to listen to me, um, from my point of view, I get to talk to myself for the next hour or however long it is and that's a nice way of getting some uh, audience engagement straight in uh, on that q a so you, you're already figuring out where people are from what their name is and what they're doing perfect so what we can what we want to do is let's just say for the sake of example we actually want to share something else and like i said as soon as i push this share button we are going to get minimized oh no we're not we're going to get minimized once i've actually shared so, you know i haven't actually opened it up that's very, very naughty of me. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to open this behaviorism PowerPoint. Behaviorism. Wow. Um, and what we can do is we can actually uh, share and we can actually look at this behaviorism PowerPoint. So you can see now I've got this wonderful red border around my behaviorism PowerPoint, which means that the people that are watching our live event on their screen all they've got is that powerpoint window they haven't got all the rest of this around the outside uh, or at least they haven't got it yet if you look in the right hand corner down here you can see this is actually what's being broadcasted out and what's being broadcast out is me so we need to go back over here and like I said, it's insane because Microsoft Teams just keeps trying to annoy you sometimes. So I'm going to click on my desktop here, which is going to put that into the queue. And I'm going to send that live. That's now live. So when I minimize this, the only thing that they are actually seeing is this PowerPoint window over here. And now we can see it down in this bottom right hand corner. This is our preview, if you like. That's what our, our participants will be seeing. Uh, so they'll actually see this first slide on behaviorism. Uh, behaviorism, by the way, is all, um, if you've done your PGCE, because this is actually um, part of a PGCE, uh, of course, if you've done PGCE, you know what behaviorism is. It's all about um, how we uh, use behaviorist uh, techniques to teach uh, people. I was going to say children, but it's not necessarily children. It's everybody. And there's some interesting kind of things. Um, by the way, uh, John Watson's approach um, and what he did with Baby Albert. If you ever just, just Google Baby Albert uh, and John Watson, geez. Now, there's a man that really, really needed to actually... Uh, wow. <clears throat> anyway, so as you can see, uh, and as we will find out later on, the only thing that uh, our, our laptop users are seeing is actually this um, this piece here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click this to a new slide uh, and I'm just gonna have a look at the other laptop for a moment. So as we can see, uh, I'm on my other laptop and all we can actually see on my other laptop is actually uh, that, that screen that we've shared, which is uh, the PowerPoint screen that that screen with the, the red box on the outside of it. I can't see the rest of the desktop. I can't see anything else. All I actually get to see is that one particular application that I've shared. Now, as you can see, uh, there's Watson's Little Albert, which is obviously the, uh, the slide that it was on at the time. Um, and Watson was, was, was an interesting individual, shall we say. He definitely had deep-seated issues. Uh, in fact, just Google Little Albert. It, it really is shocking what, what we did well, we didn't do it. He did to this this kid back in 1920. He was revolutionary, apparently. So I'm just going to nip back round the corner and we'll carry on. Okay, so this is what we're actually seeing. So uh, what we can do is let's just go back into Teams over here. And it doesn't matter if I've got a window in front of that PowerPoint presentation like I have right now. What's going out is still that PowerPoint presentation. That's it. Okay, so what we can do now is I'm actually going to push stop sharing. And because I haven't got anything queued up over here on the left hand side, at the moment, 
the only thing that will go out is the live event will continue in a moment so we can push my picture and we can send me live and there you go I'm back live again if we had different presenters down here or different producers obviously we can get them involved and say okay so next up we're gonna have uh, John who's got um, a presentation on the rhinos of Africa I don't know or you know the giraffes of the savannah uh, depending on what you're doing obviously um, so the, the, there's a nice sort of segue that we can do uh, from one live section to another live section and we can just queue it up all nice and neatly here you can even have um, uh, videos and stuff uh, but don't try and use films and TV if you're using Windows 10 because strangely enough um, it's not compatible with Microsoft Teams yes ladies and gentlemen Microsoft's product is not compatible with Microsoft's product whoever whoever programmed this sometimes you, you have to sit there and wonder so uh, we're gonna pretend we're coming to the end of our live session uh, we've been running our live team session now for 16 minutes or so uh, and when we actually want to end we say well thank you very much for joining us uh, I hope you've learned stuff I you know and, and all that kind of thing depending on exactly what we're doing and then what we can do is you see this big red button that says end well that's kind of what it does this ends the live training uh, oh sorry the live event so if you push that it says are you sure you want to end the live event you can't restart an event after it has ended so I'm just gonna say yes I want to end the live event and that'll end the live event okay so now what will happen is if anybody uh, is still logged on like my one attendee here all they will see is this gray screen that says that the live event has indeed ended we can still talk to each other so if we've got like half a dozen people presenters producers etc we can sit here and, and, and have a quick catch up about how we thought the session's gone you know so we can sit and go that was a tough one or wow that, that there, there were some great questions coming from people there i'd never thought of using that in that way and, and all of that sort of stuff so there is actually uh, some value at the end as well that we can actually use so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to push the leave button. Okay, remember when I said the la literally the last thing you do is leave. You leave the meeting. So we're actually going to leave our live event just like that. And it will come, it will come straight back to Teams and go, there you go. Um, brilliant. It, 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 it's done. So if I wanted to go back later on and have a look at some stuff, all you have to do is go to the calendar, click on Teams. And although the team meeting has actually ended, we now have these extra things down here that we can do. So we, as producers and presenters, we can download uh, a video recording of, the, of our event. We can download the Q&A report. We can download the attendee engagement report. We can, if we want to, we can disable the recording for all of our attendees so they can't actually see it anymore. There's a transcript there which is auto-generated, which isn't massively useful most of the time. Um, I, I love the back. <laughs> I love advanced options, which is backup recording, which is you get to download the recording, which is what you can do there. Um, it, 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 I think it's just a brilliant piece of programming. Um, the transcript is obviously in the uh, United States. English United States so be, 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 be aware the spelling is not going to be great if you use the word color a lot or aluminium um, and it's frequently not quite right so anyway we can download all of that stuff there there's no point cancelling the meeting because obviously we've already had the meeting and then I'm just going to click close now I'm actually going to go back to the other laptop over there and I'm going to show you what that kind of what that experience is looking like from the other side of the fence so our live event has ended um, and there you go the live event has has actually ended so what we can do is we can actually go backwards and forwards in our video uh, whilst we're actually sitting here looking at it um, I don't remember pulling that face we can still see um, my questions and the featured questions uh, if people are still manning the Q&A, which they're, they're, they're not at the moment, you can obviously ask another question. Or indeed you get to leave as well. You get to leave and you can actually say, based on this event, you can give them feedback or whatever. You can rejoin. No, you can't. Um, you can rejoin only if the event is still running. Okay. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push that cross, I'm going to push that cross, and then I'm going to come back here. And this is my email that I sent to myself uh, right at the beginning to give me the, the invite to that meeting. Okay, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that. Uh, I'm still going to represent in, in, in Microsoft Teams. Why not? And what that will actually do is it will take me back to the very start of our live meeting. It said when start I pushed, live event. Yes, go live there now. Go, and we are now I can go live. back and I can watch the, start the entire so meeting button. all the way so up you push until that. the end. There you go. The live event has ended. Um, there's the Q&A. Uh, so if anybody else had asked questions, etc., they're in, uh, you know, and the moderators have, have responded, they are in there, no, no problem at all. There's the questions that you've asked. Um, and if obviously somebody responded like there, yes, it's magic. And obviously in the featured, I said it, <laughs> it's more for collaboration than a fox is, which, which is a bizarre sentence to, to come off with the, Never mind. Anyway, the point is, you can come back, uh, and the recording will actually be up on, on Teams for about 21 days. Um, they keep altering and shifting the timeline somewhat. Um, earlier on, it was 90 days, and before that, I think it was something like 180. It's down to 21 at the moment. Um, but there is uh, discussions that Microsoft are having to actually uh, boost that back up to, I think, 90 days again. But it won't be until next year. So that is pretty much how a live event works. Live events are great. They're very, very useful. Um, what's brilliant about them is you can send them just within your organization or outside of your organization. But, it, you know, if we're looking at this public one, you can see that, yes, anybody can watch it as if they've got the link, but they can't interact with it. Even if they send a message, I can just ignore the message, I can delete the message, I can archive the message off, I can just say, no, I'm not interested in that, I can dismiss that message. So it's not something that can get taken over and invaded, uh, unlike uh, some other platforms where you can have a video call, and if it goes, somebody publishes that, that uh, the, the join link uh, online. Um, there's been occasions where where that has happened and you know lots and lots of people have turned up you can't do that with Microsoft Teams uh, and even if they do it doesn't matter because they can't interfere so that's pretty much it so my, my top tips for you are uh, first off always have at least two producers just in case something goes wrong um, let me think another tip would be uh, start early um, you know, so, so you've got that little thing that says, hi, you know, the live event's going to start soon. You will have noticed that uh, as, as I was sat there talking to you, um, unlike in a Teams meeting, I can't blur the background. I can't change the background. Um, with a live event, what's behind you is what's getting broadcast. So in this particular broadcast, what was behind me is my house. Because I'm in my house, it's, it's you know, Corona times, and that's where we are. Um best piece of advice to give you is practice before you go live with a proper event practice uh, have two three five a hundred goes make sure you know what you're doing make sure if you know somebody else is uh, producing and presenting with you that they know what they're doing have a run through make sure it's working exactly what how you want it to work and how you think it should work because uh, there's no harm in practicing there really is no harm in practicing just don't give anybody the link and nobody will ever know so there you go that's uh that's pretty much it for today uh, i'd like to thank you for taking part in our team's training and i hope to see you again in another video session thank you very much indeed and goodbye